Hey everyone, good morning. So, I was in bed this morning and then yesterday a little bit I had these thoughts of what would be a good video topic. So, today I'm going to talk about living in the now versus denying or suppressing our past or our emotions. Using the now as like an escape. And thirdly, can we live in the now too much? And what what why do we why do on the other side of the things why do people usually miss the now and like not in the now enough at all so I'll talk about that now okay um, so the reason why we don't live in the now generally is because people are always dwelling on the past and thinking about the past we're outside the perceptual now Sens sensual sensory experience of the now because we're dwelling and thinking about the past too much second of all huge reason we're rushing to the future so now is like a means to an end that's when we miss the now extensively excessively and extensively so if you look at yourself today look at your rushing psychological and even physical rushing to the future your emotional unease okay so instead of like sort of like being calm and looking at a stone you're thinking about the thing you got to do you're worrying about the future and you're rushing to sort things out so it's a balance of letting go of the psychological and emotional unease and stress relaxing more but if you feel like moving quickly or you need to move quickly go ahead and move quickly like, you can't break the speed limit in your car. So if you're driving within the speed limit, at the maximum, for example, safely, what's the point in getting stressed? You're going as fast as you can literally and practically go. <clears throat> so you can have ease and accomplish everything far better with a sense of ease and calm. Okay, so I invite you today to watch this and to move a little bit either slower or else simply fast but more mindfully and consciously. Okay, so this is going to bring me back to the first point I mentioned, okay? Using the now as, a, as an escape or a getaway from our emotions to suppress them or to deny them. So, what the now teaching, the living in the now teachings, don't usually talk about much, which is essential in life, is the integration and balance of also, also learning from the past and understanding our emotions and ex and understanding our needs and expressing our emotions and fulfilling our needs so we all have needs different needs like needs for rest sleep food social action social time contribution to society um, time in nature um, cleansing and looking after our physical body like just washing etc personal care um, maybe seeing our family, see, seeing friends, um, um, maintenance again, like exercise for example, like general health and psychological and emotional maintenance, um, relaxation, um, creativity, expressing ourselves, personal creativity, producing or making things, um, Ver our hobbies we need to look after like our things that we find exciting interesting and passionate about our hobbies so by just simply living in the now and paying attention to our breathing and our walking or looking at the sky like a lot of people talk teachers talk about living in the now that doesn't fulfill our needs it doesn't even help us to understand our needs so there has to be a certain level of focus on self understanding like like socrates says like knowing thyself um, knowing others is wisdom, knowing thyself is enlightenment. So that's part of, then we can mix that in with living in the now and not rushing and not dwelling too much, not dwelling needlessly or pointlessly or destructively on the past where we cause emotional upset and trauma now. Okay, so, it, so getting back to the point, refresh. You don't need to always try and live in the now like some teachers of living in the now or mindfulness talk about incorporate and mix and juggle mix everything together in a sense of harmony and balance you can live outside of the now too much and it causes unhappiness and stress or just in a sense of imbalance not optimal 
or you can live in the now and always be trying to live in the now and be mindful and pay attention to stuff. So it's time to just let go and it's time to focus. There's time to concentrate and there's time to relax and let go of concentration. There's a time to study for exams and a time to like take a break. There's a time to work and there's a time to take a holiday or a vacation or a break. So life is a holistic experience of body, mind, spirit. All seven major chakras, not just the physical base ones on the bottom, the root, the sensual, the sacral, etc. Not just the third eye, the pineal, the pituitary and the heart chakra. <laughs> It's a mixture, it's a, it's a clever and intelligent and wise mixing together, juggling and balance of all of them together. We're physical beings too, we're spiritual beings too, we're not just one of them, we're both, okay? So, we, we, we don't want to try to be too calm or peaceful. We don't want to express our, we don't want to suppress our emotions, okay? We don't want to deny the truth, deny the fact that we're pissed off or upset or frustrated or angry or upset, okay? We don't want to deny that with a sense of pretending to be all like monk-like or Buddhist or holy, okay? That's, that's ridiculous and r wrong idea or teaching, okay? That just keeps you sick, blocks your energy, really an energy flow. It suppresses your emotions, it creates a block, it closes the tap. You're supposed to let the water flow out of the tap. You're supposed to let like energy circulate and move and dissipate. That's how you get better and you feel good in life. It's everything I've been saying and integration and melding of all of the, the above that I've just mentioned. But what the thing is you can do is you can express your emotions for the purpose and intention of good, for healing, for understanding of everybody. So we can get closer instead of separate and hurt and divide and destroy and erode. So you express mindfully, consciously and mindfully express yourself, not to hurt, not to be mean, try to do it caringfully, with a sense of mindfulness, especially especially time you want to be mindful is when you're feeling upset, or like, you know, all out of sorts and distraught and crazy or like losing it, that's when you need to take a break and rebalance or at least be mindful. When you feel yourself going unconscious in a situation, try to take a break, rebalance and recenter. So, anger is not bad. This is an emotion to tell us that our needs aren't being met, or boundaries are being crossed, or there's possible harm coming our way. Also, we don't have to like hurt someone like with a with something like you know because we're angry. We can express, or we can take a break and express and let the anger dissipate and flow naturally in another way some people go for a walk a walk in nature is a fantastic way a brisk walk some people do exercise some people vent and like start shouting or cursing to themselves like i used to do that like <laughs> you know doing press-ups like it's a sort of a weird way to do it like almost but just just letting I'd, I'd built up of anger so i had to express it and let it out like turn the tap on and then, then I felt better. And an energy sensitive empath said, "Oh, I can. You're, I know you're like on the spiritual path or peaceful or whatever else. But to be honest, sometimes I feel uncomfortable sitting beside you because I can feel a lot of suppressed anger and emotions within you. So, okay, I said fine. Thanks. Talked time a little bit. Went home. Nine months later, I met her again. She said, whoa, whoa, what did you do? Like, you're like 90% more gone. Like, usually t ne people never do it so quickly. Like, how did you get rid of all that anger so much? <laughs> That's just from what I'm telling you. Whenever I felt any type of trigger or irritation, ups, frustration, annoyance, like, I just, I expressed it, like, via cursing to myself and, like, spitting almost, like, by, like just gobbledygook. <laughs> Like foxes put them cursing and cussing and stuff and doing all the like press ups on the ground, you know? Push ups. <laughs> and another time in the past I used to chop up wood. I used to chop up doors and wood. But that's a bit more dangerous when you're anger. I never hurt myself, but you have to be careful. So that's another factor in life, how to balance your life and and emotions. So like when my cat would meow too much in the morning, like I just got triggered, like just got pissed off and angry, like constantly meowing. So I used to sadly like just you know I get frustrated with her, you know, like. But then I learned, hey, listen, now you're getting this is just a trigger. This is like stuff 
from the past. And humans trigger each other all the time. That's what romantic relationships do, and that's what your family does. We trigger you. We trigger each other. And the spiritual reason of this is so we can become aware vividly of our triggers and our wounds and our traumas and our unhealed parts. It's like a volcano, a big, big mushroom cloud. The pressure, the emotions coming up because your partner didn't say something or they did say something or they, they did something or they didn't do something and you're like, whoa. It's kind of funny almost, like comic almost, the, the journey of life. And then you become aware, this is the spiritual reason, and then you got to address and let go and to heal and to understand and self-wisdom, self-knowledge, like it's enlightenment. So it's all good. I'd like to say what my, my, my heart hero and inspiration said to me, Peace Pilgrim, life is a life. Life is a series of tests, and if you pass these tests, you can look upon them as good experiences. And I have to agree, as we develop and expand, it's like we're in the Matrix, and our operators, if you know that film, are like giving us a next level of the, the game of life, like a computer game, like level 1, level 2, level 3, level 20, level 30. In my life, I've noticed that as I've become more developed and mature and expanded, Life gives me new tests and ones that I'm able for, but it's always enough to challenge me and expand me that even further. It's not too much for me, but it's not too little. Just enough to give me a good testing challenge. And it can be stressful, it can be upsetting, but it, I'm, I'm learning all these different things. And it's hard sometimes, of course. And But the easier, lower level challenges are like easy for you now, so like this keeps you on your tippy toes. And I feel life is definitely like that. And like my heart hero inspiration, Peace Pilgrim, She's so awesome. I'll put a link below the, the video. Have a look at my links, everyone. You can check out my own fox.org coaching and my books and my life coaching, relationship and health and communication coaching and my herb shop, Higher Self Herbs. And I'll leave a video to, for a documentary about Peace Pilgrim, who really inspired me in my early mid-twenties. Such a beautiful character. <laughs> a charismatic lady. <coughs> Walked homelessly for like 28 years, spreading the word of peace before the internet came. Inner peace, community peace, group and global world peace, peace between nations, everything. God, she was such a powerhouse. She was aligned. Mm, nice person, nice character. I liked her a lot, I love her. She also knew when she was going to die. Yeah. She acted all funny and did new things the, night bef the day before she was died in a car accident. <laughs> instantaneously. She was so aligned, you know. I want to be like that. I am inspired by Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Peace Pilgrim, Jesus. I know some people Some people say Jesus, I know, all, too much stuff to talk about Jesus, but then Lao Tzu, all these like lovely, loving heart characters, aligned, inspired, passionate living. Um, Mother Teresa, Princess Diana, she like touched the sick and care for the sick. And uh, make me just want my heart to melt right now. It's like, so moving. Ah, nice mountains, I can see. Nice mountains. This is the dirtiest part of the place, but it's just a tiny part of the place that I'm in. It's so beautiful here. Calston, Canada. Summer 2016, Owen's life. <laughs> so, my message in this is to understand and know yourself and to seek harmony and balance and with the wisdom and understanding that you have in life. To mix things together, to, to juggle, to incorporate, to learn, a little bit of let go, turn the fine tuner of the radio a little bit. Seek that perfect spot for you that suits you as the individual which you're individual energy and needs of this day and this moment perfectly don't try and copy anybody else you have your way like a guitar string like you don't want it too tight you don't want it too loose Bing. you want it just perfect to play your note and then you find more optimal sense of peace and inner peace and peace of mind and balance in your life so we've we've different chakras, we've body, mind, spirit. There's so much to learn in life. 
life is interesting. So I hope you like this life. I hope you find the tests okay with a sense of optimism and trust and pray to your guides. We have an angel at least looking after us, a guardian angel, at least one. Especially for us. There's archangels out there, there's beautiful beings, there's physical beings who are enlightened and aware. There's there's ETs out there all along, it's in all the spiritual and religious books, it's in the caves, it's everywhere. The world government just trying to suppress so much of the truth. Basically speaking, whatever the, the, the public media say is usually the opposite. <laughs> There's so many loving beings out there. You're a loving being. You are, you're loved, I'm loved. We're all loved and lovely beings. It takes a victim to make a victim. None of us are bad people. None of us. Let go, take that out of your vocabulary, bad person. Good people. We're just on different levels of being traumatized, wounded and hurt. And when we're not healed, that we just express and create more hurt and victims and wounded people. It takes a victim to make a victim, a new victim. So if you heal your ancestral patterns, you can break the generational like giving on and passing on the wounds and traumas to each other. And then the future bloodline and the world will be, you'll lead by example. And you'll always be beginner's mind, forest comp learner, like like the way I am. Humble, but knowing your beauty and brilliance also, just the same as everybody else. In, we all are individual diamonds of beauty and brilliance. I don't know, this stuff isn't in the media for some reason, because it's like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, it just, this could be, the world can be and is such a beautiful place. And I invite you to make it more beautiful for yourself and for others, your loved ones, and care for everybody. Leave a place a bit nicer and brighter and better than the way you found it. And including a person, if possible. With a sense of balance, you know, just generally sometimes incorporate it when you can. Bear it in mind. Okay, everyone, I hope this video made sense about living in the now, expressing and suppressing emotions, you know, understanding yourself, following, like letting, um, healing, expressing, um, meeting your needs, and helping others to meet their needs, you know. So, um, I'll let you go, and I hope you have a lovely day. Much love, and love, and kisses, and hugs, and thanks for your time, and thanks for all your positive energy you always leave me. And I look forward to meeting you or on Facebook, or in person, or on the internet. Message me or subscribe or share the video. Friends, family, groups, social media, and uh, befriend me on Facebook. I use that a lot. And of course, do please like check out my websites below if you want like personal one-to-one -one help. A little bit of help goes a long way. I've seen so many healers. So if if if, if anyone that resonates with you or myself, check out the links or see them in person. And um, I'd love to work with you or help you in any way that I can. So drop us an email if I can help you in any way. And other than that, I'll talk to you again another time. So. Take care.